Welcome to Backyard Philosophy, a podcast where a couple friends grab some cold ones, sit around the fire, and talk about science, philosophy, and history. Crack one open, sit back, and get a good laugh as we discuss everything from automation to why the meaning of life is 42. A listener requested an episode about modern Luddites. So we're going to talk about the Unabomber. And who better to talk about Luddites than someone who has a flip phone and someone who doesn't have social media. Before we get into all that, Mike, how are you doing? What are you drinking? I'm doing pretty good. I guess I fall into Luddites not having social media. And uh, I'm drinking some water, trying to get over a hangover. But what about yourself, my friend? I got a Jack and Coke right now. And uh, Luddites, for those of you who don't know, are people who don't like technology or think technology is bad. Now, there's a term referred to modern Luddites called Neo-Luddites, and what that means really depends on the person you ask. For some people, it's a complete removal of themselves from technology, and for other people, it's just not having a social media or not having a cell phone. It kind of depends who you ask of what that term exactly means, but either way, the main idea is that technology is bad and it burns our life unnecessarily and we'd be happier without it. I think you find this funny, Nick. When researching this, I came across a website called neoluddism.org. I kind of find it ironic that a Luddite has a website. Yeah, I think that's one of the ironies, right? Because I also looked up like stuff about neo-Luddites online and I found a lot of like neo-Luddite forums. <laughs> I was like, uh, I don't know. I hope they see the irony in this. <laughs> that's uh, that's kind of calling the kettle black there. Yeah, like this this one guy was looking for other people to kind of start like a Luddite commune with, but online. I mean, that's how you would I would do it. The easiest way to find people who think like you are online, but it's probably pretty hard to find... <laughs> People who think like you, if your thinking involves not using technology. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm happy we both found that very ironic. Before we get too far into it, we're not only talking about the Unabomber. We're going to talk about a lot of different things. Mostly the one that comes to the top of everyone's mind, the Amish. Yeah, the uh, Amish. I, f- I feel I'm treading into dark waters, Nick. Uh, the Amish have some interesting traditions i'll put it that way uh and to be fair this is the one group we can say anything about and they'll never hear it true that is kind of true unless they go on what was it called rumple skin Rump- rum <laughs> rum spring rum springer <laughs> were you thinking rumple still yeah, i was i stopped my way i stopped halfway through like nope that's not it uh yeah no uh amish uh, are probably the extreme version of luddites i would say or at least the most prevalent one in at least our society. Uh, but just to name off a couple of things which I I want to kind of talk about on the Amish is the Amish don't have mirrors, or at least some Amish... Am, Amish communities kind of change from community to community, but some Amish don't have mirrors, and some Amish don't put faces on their dolls simply for vanity reasons. They don't want people to feel like you're better than anyone else. That's why most... Uh, horse and buggies for the Amish or they all look the same and they're all the same color because they don't want anyone to be better or more important they want it all on an equal board which I don't know if I completely agree I I think the mirrors has a good point of not being vanity like don't keep up with your looks etc cetera, etc cetera. but if I want a faster car I want to paint it whatever I want to paint it I want to get it every what I get it it might be selfish it might be vain but Sometimes that's a good thing. And I was curious about your opinion on this first, this Amish law, rule, tradition. Not quite sure what to call it. I mean, Henry Ford didn't see why you should have a different colored car. So I guess I don't see why you should have a different colored car either, Mike. Just kidding. Um, Yeah, but I think that's more of a religious thing and not, I'm sure maybe they want a different color buggy. But I mean, what, 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 are you, what color are you painting your buggy? Are you going to paint flames on it or racing stripes? just for the irony maybe just, just but i uh i 
I also want to point out. Put like a big Fig Newton sticker on the back. Hey, get some sponsors. Get, get put uh, put out like, hey, come buy our products at blank, 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 blank. Put them where at? Come buy our Amish products at this website? No. Come... Or buy our Amish products at this phone number? No, just say like, hey, uh, our farmer's market is at this location, like 75th and 9th Avenue or something like that. But I also want to point out, you said something about their religion. I have that kind of tied in deeply with their Luddite philosophy is a choice, but it's also a choice because of their religion. Does that make sense? As in they they could... So their religion spurs their choice to be Luddites. Yes. Yes. Okay, I agree with that. And I don't know how I feel about that. Like, We'll talk throughout the podcast about people who simply chose to have less technology in your life. But when you're indoctrinated and choose, and it's, life is chosen for you, I don't know how I feel about that. But before we get too far away, I want to go back to the vanity part. Because I think vanity has some appeal for the modern person so they could be a little bit more Luddite. Like maybe limit the amount of mirrors in your home or something like that. Because, God, how many people are taking selfies? How many people are spending hours looking in front of the mirror? It Maybe the Luddite's got a point with some vanity stuff. Yeah, well, that's the same with, uh, isn't, I I think I'm right on this, Instagram getting rid of likes so you can't see who's liking it, so you don't feel bad or good if you don't get likes just because you'll never see the number. So it's kind of the same way of heading towards less vanity. But I don't really know how many people look, and maybe just because I'm a dude and I never look in the mirror, but how often do you look in the mirror? Uh... Maybe twice a day when I put in my contacts, brushing my teeth, and then uh, at the gym. Now, that see, that's where it gets interesting for me. So I like seeing myself at the gym because it makes me go, look at you. You got to work harder. Don't don't slack. It, it, it forces me into reality seeing myself versus having an ego and looking in the mirror and getting, I don't know, uh, ready for a date. I think those are two very different things, both connected to the mirror. Both are vain. But I think one's a much more productive vanity. Yeah. I don't know. I I don't really care. Get rid of the mirrors. I won't notice. <laughs> That's like... But, I mean, I, I get it. I mean, I don't think it's the worst rule. I, I don't know if it's if everyone would like it. But, I mean, I can see where they're coming from. Out of everything that the Amish do, I'd say I, I definitely agree that that wouldn't be the worst one that's what i was thinking too but then it kind of gets weirder with the horse and buggy and the amish not having faces on their dolls that's that's strange to me and i can't quite that's just conformism not necessarily vanity in my opinion and uh so there's something that's kind of important to note is that just like every religion each community has a like different rules that they follow so i think most communities don't have faces on their dolls but there are some communities who do draw faces on their dolls and stuff like that oh absolutely um well and for a penny for a pound i'm gonna pick on the amish some more sorry amish you're not gonna listen to this but sorry people who left the amish community so with technology we get these things called cars tinder bumble uh bars places where you can go to find a partner a uh sexual mate it's a little harder to do that when you're a Luddite to find people. And I found it interesting, like Nick said, each community is different. But some Amish communities date and marry in the span of about seven weeks. And I imagine because there's not... Well, that's that's a religious thing. That's not necessarily a an Amish thing. I mean, that's pretty common in like the Mormons' religion as well. Well, I was trying to get to the point of choosing a partner is a lot harder when you're a luddite you don't have travel you don't have uh the internet to investigate and figure out other people it's a lot more limited dating pool yeah and they so yeah you're you're limited to your community and then to get around having adverse effects of reproducing in one's community they'll go to like events they'll whether they have like a sports team that'll they'll have like a, a softball event forget the other sport that they played and uh they'll go to other communities to kind of bring in new genetics and then people can move genes around that way yeah that's a interesting reason to breed just simply to move genetics that that i feel like technology has helped events that were that's not our thing anymore like we don't have to worry about sleeping in the same gene pool and i i am curious on well i think 
that was probably a thing for most of history, though. It's just right now that that was that's not the case. Oh yeah, I, I probably agree with that. But um, that's as humanity we've improved and developed new technology, which has made it easier to explore. So I am to me, it's always curious to me on how luddites get through the dating scene. And I mean, I think the best modern version of luddites are the Amish, or at least extreme example, uh, an extreme example of. Luddites. Yeah. Well, it's probably a lot easier when everyone looks the same. True. True. Well, not to solely pick on the Amish. There's this couple I want to talk about because... Well, I, I want to get uh, talk a little bit more about how the Amish interact with technology before we move on. So, like we talked about, the Amish have horse and buggies, but they have to live in society. So, some horse and buggies will have lights, or at least marker lights. So... Other cars can see them or signs on them. And then they have rules about using technology. They can use it for business. So you can have a computer or a phone or cell phone for business because that's how the world works. And so if you look at stuff they produce, like dairies, they produce milk, they have like refrigerators to keep that milk in because that's what the FDA wants. And so they do use technologies in those ways to make so that they can interact with the outside world because you need technology to interact with the outside world in this day and age. Put me back in. I don't want to be on the outside world. Put me back in. The steak tastes better inside. Uh, it, it probably does. It probably does. No, I I see the point of that coming through of, yeah, you got to adapt to survive and you're having limited technology. I count that as a modern Luddite. Even if they're using a cell phone for a work or business, you not isolationism is probably not possible anymore as a community. Yeah, and I want to bring one more point up because we're probably going to talk about it later on. Some people, not all people, but a lot of people who are modern Luddites are Luddites for environmental reasons, arguing that everything was greener or cleaner without technology. But the the government's in a constant battle with a lot of Amish communities because of of their more traditional farming practices, using waste to fertilize their fields, which flows into waterways. And so it's actually it's not as green as I guess we thought it would be. Well, we have improved and gotten more knowledge. Uh, I understand where people are coming from, where it was the old way, where we weren't burning as much CO2, uh, you know, much chemicals. But on a scale production-wise quite efficient what we morally do it yeah i i can i can see that being true i just find it well i just didn't expect to to research amish and one of the things that comes up is amish environmental problems yeah now that has didn't come across my research and that's a weird thing to come across but that's all i have in the amish you want to talk about a weird couple yeah so to me uh what, what was the year the amish thing Society was perfect. It was like 1890 or something like that. So, some, so I, I believe it was in the 1800, uh, 1800s, correct? Uh, yeah, I'm looking for it. Well, we're moving up in history because the Amish, even though they're around today, have that time period stuck in their head. And this couple in Washington who also have a certain time period in their head, they're Luddites, but Luddites from a different era. So we might think traditionally Luddites as people out of the farm, buildings of like uh building furniture like the Amish or simply being a hunter gatherer person out or have a cabin just kind of isolated not wanting technology in their life well this couple chose the Victorian era they chose to live in an age when telephones electrolyte bulbs were first coming out or being introduced so they still have some modern things but they dress like a uh, valid Victorian area they ride their bicycles valid Victorian era like the full dress, the full suit, their home, read books, uh, make their own socks, the whole nine yards. And I found that... Ex- do they do they bathe like once a month? I do not know that. They did not say or specify in their interview. Their... So that's a yes. Uh, well, yeah. Yeah, I, that's probably probably true. I bet the, the interviewer smelled them and was like, well, that's, that's what once a month bathing gets you. <laughs> he didn't think to ask because he knew. <laughs> But I just thought it was so interesting to choose a time period in history and just live in that moment, live live in that era in the modern world. I class them as Luddites. I mean, 
they have a manual record player. Their light bulbs are crap. They mainly use candles. Uh, they cook with gas and uh, wood. They are very, very in the lifestyle of, I would say, Luddites, but they're not classified as Luddites. They're just classified as people living in a area. They're classified as hipsters is what they call <laughs> Well, they do live in Washington, so... Oh, man, I would have guessed New York. Oh, Damn it. no, no, no. But they seem like a lovely couple. They seem like they're having a blast just to dress up how they want to dress up and live the way they want to live. And Yeah, until the cholera gets them, Mike. <laughs> but I just, uh, man, like, I think we can both agree, Nick, that sometimes having a little less technology in our day-to-day lives would be beneficial. But to cho- choose in a whole era that you're just going to live and kind of die by that, that's impressive. One way or another, that's impressive. Yeah, what era would you go? Would you feel comfortable enough to go back, back to and live in? You going back to all the way to like the Mongol hordes? Uh, actually, probably not too far from that. I would either be uh 1600 Italy for the Renaissance kind of living, or maybe maybe like early or late Middle Age, Evil Ages, like Vikings. Because fun fact, Vikings are very clean, cleanly uh people at the time, so. I like soap. I prefer to use soap. What about you, Nick? I assume, I if I had to take an educated guess, I would say the American pioneers. Well, I'm an American, so it has to be after the invention of the flintlock rifle, at least. Um, I don't know. Because you want to go back in time where you don't have, like the Victorian era people, where you have access to some you know modern goods like technology, but not back in time where your medicine is shit and you just die for no reason. <laughs> well, I'm pretty sure they're still getting like modern medicine. Like they're having their cake and eating it too. They're living how they want to live, but if they really need to, they can just pop into the modern world, quote unquote. Yep. That have you seen the show Beforeners? I have heard about it. that's when uh people from history come back to, uh, come to the future, right? Yeah, like from three different time periods. But one of them is like the Viking just come back and or they're in like modern uh i forget what country it is but yeah and so they're just have their culture but they're living in like you know going to starbucks and shit it's kind of weird but it's exactly what we're talking about is it bad that i really want to carry my axes everywhere and just go get coffee like that actually sounds really fun to me no that's because you are weird (laughs) oh but i i we chose individual points. I, I just found it interesting. I don't feel like it's not talking about more, but people choosing different eras. I don't. I didn't really come across that besides them of people like, hey, I'm choosing the 1950s, the 1930s, the 1870s. Not just just choosing a date. So I guess the question is, what is the piece of technology that turned the tide in their mind? Where it's like electricity, good. You know, plumbing, good. Telegraph wire, bad. Like, what's the, where's the line? Like, what is the piece of technology that turned the tide of technology helping to technology hurting? That's a great point. I don't know what, see, in my mindset, it's not the technology I don't have. It's simply the other things I do have. But that's a good point. I never thought about the mindset of, hey, this is the one thing about technology. Is it, I wonder how many people for modern law nights is solely the cell phone. Well, 1876 was when Alexander Graham Bell invented the phone. But I don't think it's the cell phone because... The internet then? I'm trying to think of what... Maybe. Modern Luddites, what is the biggest cause for them not to like technology? Here's an unpopular opinion. Maybe it's not the technology, but it's bringing it back to the original Luddites of it's the things technology makes people do, like the work and the never being, like never being off work, always being connected... And it's that kind of lifestyle, and they just want, you know, more. They want to be paid more and more time off, and technology is making them work for less money. Yeah, uh, I think this is actually a great point if you want to, because I didn't know this until we researched our first Luddites, which you should go check out at Backyard Philosophy. But the Luddites didn't start for hating technology; they wanted it simply to keep their jobs. And Nick, I think you know a lot more than I did because you did the mini episode on it. Yeah, the Luddites were. They basically just wanted to be paid more. The uh, economic conditions in Europe were bad at the time. They took my job. Europe was in a war, as always. Which <laughs> Damn it, you beat me to it. That part shouldn't be surprising. <laughs> <me> <laughs> and uh, 
but they just wanted higher wages and more job security. And it came during the Industrial Revolution. So they took their anger out on the machines in the factories. And because of that, they became known as being against technology. But it, the original Luddites weren't against technology at all. In fact, they relied on it. Part of their message was they wanted to be paid more for being skilled labor, for being able to work that technology. So without that technology, they wouldn't be able to be paid more. But we know them for destroying technology or being against technology. I do find it a little ironic that the original Luddites were not against technology, but now the Neo-Luddites are against technology. It, it's uh, They kind of got flipped there. Yeah, well, maybe... Let's let's talk about the Unabomber for that answer. <laughs> oh God, what a transition! So his his manifesto was talking about because of technology, humans aren't able to to disconnect and go out in nature and experience things. They're not allowed to, or they they can't interact. They can't. Basically, technology was keeping them connected to whatever it is, like plugged into work to all these different things. And they aren't allowed to disconnect, and so it leads to unhappiness. And so I think that's kind of the, the Luddite view of that technology leads to unhappiness because it's it's always keeping us connected and time-consuming. I don't know. I, th- I think that is that is the main reason. I don't know if there's a specific piece of technology that, that started that. I kind of agree with that statement, though. We tend to use dual-edged swords as a human race, and technology is definitely a dual-edged sword. With not much precision, we kind of use it more as a club than we do its intended purpose. It's a I, I it's weird to say. I kind of get where he's coming from, where technology kind of brings out the worst in people, and we get too distracted from what's important. <laughs> yeah, that unit bomber's got a lot of good points. <laughs> I'm really good at digging my own grave. But if if I had to guess, because it's this anti-technology movement didn't start with the invention of the internet. It didn't start. I can't imagine the cell phone. I almost think it's more of a anti-globalization movement than it is an anti-technology movement with technology being the instrument moving, you know, globalization forward. Ooh, see, for me, it's simply people afraid of change. You think global, I think individual. That's interesting. I think it's people just being scared to change and they like the way the things are. They don't want anything different. Yeah, I mean, that definitely, that's definitely a part of it. But back to your Unabomber, because uh, I actually don't quite know that much about the Unabomber. I I wonder what an extreme Luddite is called. Like, I feel like that's got to be a special word for it. But the Unabomber is definitely an extreme Luddite. I did find it weird, though. He wanted technology to disappear, but used timed bombs at colleges. That's, that's just weird to me. Hey, well, <laughs> how many Luddites do we see online? Touche, touche. I, I'll be honest. I don't think I've ever come across a Luddite in real life, let alone online. Yeah. Well, I went to a, a Luddite Reddit page, and there, it turns out there's a lot of Luddites online. That's just again, it's just so ironic. Come on, come on. Like, it, please tell me, like the, the title, the very top of the Reddit uh, in quotations. Like, we know this is ironic. Uh, I, I don't know. I'm sure it does. I hope so. Um. Yeah. So I was just re- like looking at. The, the Unabomber's, like, his manifesto. It's your favorite, it, favorite nightly read, right, Nick? <laughs> yeah. And he ar- just argues a lot of things we talked about, that the way technology works, we're destroying uh, human communities. We're becoming separate from each other, and we're moving further and further away from each other. Humans adapt to machines. Hmm. And I and agree with that. Because as we... <laughs> I know you do. Shut up. And as we move like further and further away from each other, uh, we can't band together, so we'll, we won't be able to keep the state accountable, and uh, we'll never be able to remove technology by ourselves because we just keep creating it. Kind of seems like so, and we get, we won't we don't like the people who are on the outside. So people who don't fall into the fold of society are the enemy. So pretty much, uh, yeah, what we're seeing today. Yeah, so, <laughs> uh, he called it. <laughs> that's uh, that's unfortunate. Do, uh, out of curiosity, since you said what we're seeing today, do you think more people are going towards anti-technology 
not not as a per, um, number wise, but a percentage wise, because there's so many people who I doubt even know what lights are. But do you think society has a growing number of people anti technology? Yeah, I mean, so I have a a flip phone, and it one it makes life hard because we live in a texting world, and I have nine keys. <laughs> I don't miss those days. But at the same time, everyone is really jealous of my flip phone. Like, man, I want to go back to that. Is it so, bad? I'm just picturing you with a fanny pack right now and a flip phone. Hey, I don't do fanny packs. <laughs> Yet. It's, it's Yet. a hands-free belt satchel. Oh, God. But I do see more people. I see it both ways. As like technology becomes more accessible, maybe people switch over to dumb phones because they don't want people to track them and it can do pretty much everything but we'll probably still have a tablet or something in the car for navigation i don't see google maps ever going away honestly i don't think many technology will ever slow down i think it'll only get built upon i think i don't know if the population is increasing maybe it's how we use the technology it's less than are we good at actually use the technology more how you use it, not if you use it. And also how technology is so ingrained into majority of the world's lives. I don't see many people breaking the trends. Like, Nick, we, I mean, we either heard or know people who've decided, you know what, I'm done, and just popped in a van and travel around and live. They don't want that much technology in their lives or wealthy belongings in there. And again, technology is not always circuit boards. I mean, the Amish don't have mirrors or faces on their dolls, so technology could just be kind of up to the imagination, I guess, if if you're a good enough arguer, you can make an argument for just about anything being technology. Yeah. I mean, I think uh, every human has an inherent distrust in technology. Look back at uh, the episode on AI. It was like, what, 50-something percent of people surveyed didn't trust artificial intelligence? Yeah. I mean... That is a very fair point, which I didn't think about. Maybe we're just scared of what other people make and we didn't make it with our own hands. I imagine people who make it with their own hands probably have more trust into it. Yeah, but I feel like that's probably the same with all new technology. I mean, at the beginning, how many people had the internet? And now it's... Everywhere. People who... It's hard, it's hard to imagine life without it, even if you remember life without it. It just seems weird to think that, oh, you couldn't go look something up back then. Yeah, and that was that's a short time period of when we went from some people having internet to everyone having internet. That was a very short time period. So I imagine, again, I think some people are just like, I don't want things to change. I'm happy how things are, and I want to keep it that way. Yeah. Could you imagine? I gotta. Yeah. Could you imagine choosing the 1980s to be your time period that you always live in? <laughs> like I'm picturing like this. So I'm picturing like an old dad who refuses to like get rid of his like neon jumper or his like uh tape cassettes and he's just like nah i'm good i'm gonna live with this i'm gonna drive the same old car listen to michael jackson uh you know this is my el camino <laughs> yeah exactly well i got some interesting numbers for you what percentage of u.s citizens do you think do not have internet four percent seven percent seven damn that's nearly double my initial guess that's that's close to one in ten that's a quite impressive i know right that seems way too high yeah i hmm, does not have well, the. In- i don't know wait is it pew pew, pew research center so uh, well i was thinking maybe they're thinking unreliable service own internet like maybe like they're on their mom service or something like that mm, i don't maybe. know maybe I'm, I'm just throwing out there I don't seven know. it doesn't seven percent seems still high to me though so most of those are rural people who make less than thirty thousand with High school or less education, and sixty five or older. That make that kind of makes sense. The older population, indeed. Uh, and if you can't afford it, you just don't get it for the lower income areas. I get that. Shit, so, there's a lot of old people still alive, or a lot of people who are poor, or probably both. Yeah, and the uh, the percentage of people who don't use the internet has gone down substantially since it started in two thousand and one. At that time, in 2001, 48% didn't use the internet. In 2005, 32%. 2010, 24%. 2015, 15%. And now in 2021, 7%. It's nearly having each time. Yeah, every five years. That is... We're down to 4% 2025. 
That is extremely impressive. That is that shows the integration of. I, I assume this is all for America, but uh, the integration of technology in the American day life. Yeah, exactly. Can't uh, you can't escape the matrix. No, well, I don't have anything else. Uh, no, I hope we covered what modern Luddites are, or at least have to throw some ideas out there of, hey, Luddites are not necessarily people who abolish all technology, but simply maybe pick what they don't want to pick. And out of curiosity, if you want to tell us where technology you would want to get rid of in your personal life, you can hit us up. And Nick, where could they hit us up at? You can find us on YouTube and Facebook at BackyardPhilosophy.com. Can they find us on and Twitter? Because I can tell you I don't want Twitter in my life. <laughs> you cannot find us on Twitter. And uh, Mike, what are you reading? I am reading Ants. Uh, it's kind of like how the colonization of Ants. I'm trying to remember the author's name real fast. But Ants, are, to me, are really weird creatures. Don't know how, how to say that. They They both are so destructive and so organized that I like them. And I also absolutely hate them at the same time. Uh, so, yeah. What about you, Nick? What are you reading? I am reading The 100-Year Marathon, China's Secret Strategy to Replace America as the Global Superpower by Michael Pillsbury. Yeah, it seems like I'm going to need to read that book uh, faster, Nick. And uh, for curious people curious, it, the author of Tales from the Ant World is Edward Wilson, who you might be familiar with his bbc documentaries on like planet earth and such like that cool and uh this episode was inspired by a comment from cheza au hope i'm pronouncing that right looks like an australian aussie 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 oi 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 and thank you all for listening <laughs>